In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to continue estimating the area underneath graphs using different polygons. Now in the past couple practice problems, we've estimated this area using different rectangles. For example, we've done a left-hand rectangle approximation where the left-hand corner hits the graph and then you sum up all the different rectangles to get the total area which you can see just from this quick thing that I've done that you get a rather poor estimate because it either goes too far over or too far under. What we've also done is made every single one of these rectangles the midpoints on the graph and this is a far better estimate because it's got a little bit of an overbite and a little bit of an underbite in each one and those about cancel each other out. In fact when we did this x squared divided by 2 and we did 8 rectangles we got a total area of 2.625 between x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2 when the exact area is equal to 2.66 repeating. Now we're going to try a little bit better of an approximation and we're just going to try to do different trapezoids. We're going to estimate this area using trapezoids and we're going to do eight of them again. So what exactly do I mean by trapezoids? What I mean by this is we're going to make the upper left hand corner of our polygon hit the graph and we're going to make the bottom right hand corner hit the graph and then we're going to draw a straight line in between them. And seeing as we know how to calculate the area of every single one of these trapezoids here, calculating the area for this graph is going to be very, very easy, at least to come up with an estimate. And we're going to use eight of these trapezoids just so we can mirror what we did in the last practice problem. Now take a look at this. I've drawn all eight of them. Do you see how accurate that is? That's incredibly close. So the area for a trapezoid is equal to one half B1 plus B2 times H. So it's an average of the two bases times the height. We're doing eight of these, so this gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bases that we're going to need. And the nice thing about it is the height of each one of these bases is just going to be equal to the function evaluated at that particular spot. So we're going to need f of negative two, f of negative one, or sorry, negative 1.5, f of negative 1, and so on up to f of positive 2. We're doing eight trapezoids, so the width of each one of these is equal to 1 half, which we calculated out in this last lecture, which is why we move half in each one. So let's, might as well make ourselves a little table to calculate this out. negative 2, negative 1.5, negative 1, negative 0.5, 0 is easy, 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2. 2 squared is equal to 4, divided by 2 is equal to 2, 1.5 is 3 halves, so that's squared is 9 fourths, divided by 2 is equal to 9 eighths, probably can write that a little bit clearer. 1 squared is equal to 1 divided by 2 is equal to 1 half. 1 half squared is 1 fourth times a half is 1 eighth. 0 is 0 and because these are positive they're going to mirror perfectly. And 2. Alright, there we have it. There's our list of our bases there. And in this particular case here, because we're using base as the actual height, you know, this is base 1, this is base 2, our height in this equation is actually going to be equal to the width, or our delta x, and that's equal to 1 five, or, you know, 1 half. 
All right, because real estate seems to be a bit of a commodity right now, I'm actually going to take the liberty of erasing this graph here so we can use it for our calculations. So the total area is going to be equal to a sum of our different trapezoids. which is going to be equal to one-half times one-half, which is one-fourth. And then it will be B1 plus B2. Plus B2 plus B3. And so on and so forth until we get to B8 plus B9. It's important that you see what's going on here. One half, well, it comes from our delta x, and then one half comes from the formula averaging the two bases. The area of the trapezoid is really, it's uh, the midpoint between your two different bases times the height, so it's actually pretty similar to the rectangular equation. This is your first trapezoid, this is your second trapezoid, and the left-hand side of your second trapezoid is equal to the right-hand side of your first trapezoid. Let me draw my little parabola here, draw two different tra trapezoids. If this is 1 and this is 2, this is B1, this is B2, and this is B3. So that's how this formula comes about here. I just used a little bit of algebra and mathematical intuition, but I encourage you to work this out for yourself and verify that this equation is correct. It will be uh, insightful to do that.